Oh yeah, friends and fam. Welcome back to Captain's Coleslaw Outdoors with yours truly. Today is a marvelous day because it is the first official day of the 2020-2021 hunting season. And our mission today is we are on a opening day resident honker hunt here on a local river system. You might tell I'm out of breath because I'm hauling all the goods in here. I got the blind, the decoy, and the kayak, which is going to be the retrieval mechanism for the birds we shoot over the river. So let me take a break here. Oh, holy cow, that's heavy. So let me tell you a little bit about the resident honker, also known as the giant Canada goose Brent canadensis. This is the bird I personally live for in terms of hunting. So the giant Canadian goose, Branta canadensis scientific name, is the largest species of goose on the planet alive today. These birds get huge. And if you live in North America, you've definitely seen geese in wilderness settings, urban settings, and everything in between. They're an extremely adaptable bird. Well, when you guys think of Canada geese, you probably think of a bird that migrates south for the winter. And a lot of geese do, including some subspecies of Branta canadensis, such as the lesser Canada goose that lives up in the Arctic Circle in the upper stretches of Alaska, which will migrate about 1,500 miles to the Gulf of Mexico to hang out for the winter. Well, here in Pennsylvania, we don't have a whole lot of lessers. We have the honkers, the giants. And these birds are not nearly as migratory most big Canada geese will only migrate probably around 100 miles in the winter. They're bigger. They have more fat reserves, thicker feathers, and that allows them to survive winter conditions much better. So another name given to the Canada goose here in Pennsylvania, the giant Canada goose, is the resident goose, meaning it's a goose subspecies that doesn't leave Pennsylvania. And the resident number of birds in Pennsylvania due to cities, urban areas, parks, and bodies of water where they can roost and be very safe from predators has left the resident population in this state to explode to massive numbers. And those are the birds we're hunting today. In Pennsylvania, the month of September is conservation season for these geese. And that is exactly what we're out here to do. You might see this mess and this sweat on my face because we are heading down to the river system right over yonder where we're going to set up the blind throw out some floating decoys and try to lure these geese in so if you've watched the slaw vlog at all you may have noticed that every single can of goose that shows up on our adventures gets a cameo in the video well, that's because i love canada geese i love calling them I love hearing them, I love eating them. They're so awesome. They are so fantastic a bird to hunt and just be around. They're like a true symbol of wilderness in every aspect of what they are. Being this is the first goose hunt of the year, I wanna really make sure that I break down for you guys what a Canada goose hunt is all about. Now, not all hunts are created equal. There's different situations, different behaviors that the birds are going through. So this is an early season goose hunt. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to approach goose hunting in the very, very earliest stretches of the season from my experiences. And later on in time, I'll show you other Canada goose hunts and I'll give you some strategic changes depending on the change in the climate and how to target them and have success. And hopefully we'll knock a couple birds down for you too. Oh, this is rough. So I'll take a little break, talk to you about the gear. So this hunt, my boys Killer G and Great Man Glenn are coming down. What we have in order to retrieve them, we don't have a dog. So we have a kayak, we got a tangle free panel blind. I've got eight Higdon geese floaters. Garrett's got four Avian X goose floaters, and Glenn's got four Tangle Free goose floaters. Obviously, we have our guns, ammo, hearing protection, licenses. Only thing I forgot was a water bottle. We gotta get through this Japanese knotweed, which is not gonna be super fun. 
and we gotta get up to the shore, and I gotta get decoys out, and I gotta get to the blind set up before the boys get here. I got about an hour to do it. I'm dying. Nothing easy about this one, baby. Warm weather hunting. The only thing worse than getting in is getting out. That was one of the most miserable pioneerings I've ever done. With about 150 pounds of gear, dragging in a kayak. I'm literally going to set this blind up and I'm gonna go take a shower and change my clothes. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna set up the blind and then I'm gonna go get cleaned off and we'll talk more about these geese. Embrace the suck, make stuff happen, and good things happen to those willing to go the extra mile. So there you go, that's our blind situation. I think it's gonna be more than enough to hide from those honkers coming in. So the idea is these birds have been feeding on fields to the south and they've been flying this riverway back to where they roost. Now these resident birds are very predictable. They're here all the time and thus we know they're going to be trafficking through this. This is a traffic shoot, meaning birds are gonna move through, we're just gonna try to make them interested, get them close, and try to pass shoot them. We'll throw some decoys out here in the water when the boys get here, but to be honest with you, now that we got a blind set up, if you didn't see it already, check out the video I dropped about different types of blinds for waterfowl hunting. It'll help you get an idea of why we picked this panel blind. So now that we got that done, I'm gonna move the rest of the equipment over into the blind here, and I'm thinking boating time. I think I'm gonna walk back go home, get a change of clothes, and then meet up with the boys and walk them in here. So I'm hoping the geese do it like I think they're gonna do it. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, there goes my sock. That one. You want mine further out or about the same distance as you want? I'm not sure at the moment. Let me get all these ones kind of out and then I'll I'll back out and kind of take a look at what it looks like. Nice and big. They actually downsize. I was gonna say they kind of look like a like a yearling goose. They downsize from what like the ones were before. The detail is nice though. Yeah, it is really nice. Like the like the back. Here with Grandman Glenn. Say hey, Glenn. Yo. You guys remember him from when we went back to the homecoming ponds to try to catch more fish than we did in the first video way back in episode three. You should go back, check it out if you haven't. We got 16 decoys out here, floaters. The current of the water plays a little bit with these decoys in terms of their placement. So we got six ounce sinkers, four ounce sinkers, and three ounce sinkers, and a couple pieces of rebar. Uh, in order to hold those birds out into the water. Having all your decoys a little bit close to shore can kind of give it an inorganic look. You wanna have some 3D depth to these spreads when you're hunting these river systems like this. It just gives the birds a little bit more confidence in what's going on uh, and gives them a better chance in more open area to land within your decoys, so. You saw the deeks, they're looking juicy as heck. This is where those birds piled in last night, so we're gonna just wait out till dark. How many think we're killing, Glenn? Total bag. Five. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Five. If we kill five birds on the first day, though, I'm gonna be, like, juiced up for the foreseeable Cause, future. Because the first volley's gonna be the, 
the nervous jitters and shakes where you just pull up and just shoot it the water. You don't even aim. You just point and shoot. <laughs> the first and the second volley is going to be like, all right, let's get serious now. Third one, they won't show. Yeah. <laughs> until those, we're on our Well, they'll show 30 minutes after dark. It's 6.27 right now, so I anticipate those birds are probably going to show up between one and a half and one hour, 45 minutes from now. Garrett's out trying to catch smallmouth. He's up the river there. We'll see what happens. We'll see if he catches anything. Do you think he catches anything? One. One small leaf. I'm giving the hard no. I bet he sees them, but can't get them to bite. Ah, I got faith. One small leaf. Comment down below if you think Garrett will catch a fish in the next half hour before he gets to the blind. Winner doesn't get anything. Smalley. Oh, Benjamin <laughs> over here. We, we were taking bets. I said he's not going to get one, but he's going to see a bunch, but they're going to be spooky. I he's like, seen one. I only saw one other than the one I caught. Yeah, was it the, big? Yeah, it was May 13. Yeah, it was bad. in that same spot. Okay. All right. Say hi to the viewers. Hey, what's up? Nothing. How many birds do you think you're going to kill today? Or we are as a co uh, cumulative group? I'm going to say nine. Oh my god. god. <laughs> oh, no, I'm serious. God. I, I think oh my can, god. I think we can get the first volley and the second or the third volley. Yeah. That's my thought. Okay. That's my hope. Half hour after sunset. It is a little bit warmer and a little bit brighter today than it was yesterday, so yeah. they could if they wanted to delay their flight. Which totally reminds me, did any, nobody brought a headlamp by chance, right? I did, yeah. Yes! <laughs> we can hey, get the decoys! <laughs> yeah, if those geese are out there, this GoPro is never gonna <laughs> see them. <laughs> so you know what I'm doing? This. Right. This runs right to the point, so we can shoot this way. 